So I've been playing Power World now for about 40 plus hours so far and in this video I'll bring you guys more or less everything you need to know about the basics of this game that includes what this game is, how it plays, how it feels, uh, what they have achieved and my personal opinion on what's on offer here. How's it going guys? My name's DPJ and if you do enjoy this video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe. Also guys, this is a game I will be covering upon release. Uh, guys, there's plenty to do in this game, so if you want to go ahead and join my Discord, there's going to be a dedicated channel right there. If you want to meet people to play with, talk about the game, the secrets, your powers, and much, much more, again, join my Discord, link down below. So this isn't a review as such. I mean, I just want to bring you guys the details on what to expect from this game. What I will say is, I plan on playing this thing on the Xbox Series X, I did have early access on PC though, and for me it was completely flawless. No lags, no disconnects whatsoever, barely any noticeable frame rate drops or anything of that sort. I mean, my PC isn't the best either, I think my graphics card is only like a 2080, 32GB of RAM, I barely play on PC, it's just there for rendering videos, I record on my Xbox, and my PC handled this flawlessly on top settings. And yes, I know it's early days, no doubt servers are semi-empty and things can change upon release, but for me it was completely fine in that regard. So Power World, if you are watching this video you probably semi-understand what this game is or what it's meant to be. Me personally, I've longed for an open world Pokemon game where you can run around, catch those mythical creatures, battle your friends, level and evolve them up, battle bosses, other trainers and just having an amazing adventure at the same time. And in doing all this on a system capable of handling something and everything we would expect. Well in that regard, this is half of what Power World is. It more or less hits all the spots I want from the open world Pokemon game or what I expect there to be within one of these open world Pokemon games if there ever was going to be one on a true next gen console. And also when it comes to battling a major plus for me is it isn't turn based. Something that really put me off the majority of Pokemon games I've played in the past. So a quick summary of what this video will go over in regards to what Power World offers. There's three sides to this game. There's probably the major side where you can explore the open world and capture these mythical creatures where you can use them to battle and do so much more with them. There's also another major side to this game where you build your base, which is truly deep with so many things for you to do. And there's also the side guys where you go out into that open world, battle different trainers, battle different people, battle different bosses, find and explore dungeons, level up, level up your powers and do so much more. We will get into all of that today. So with Power World, the open world is utterly massive. The powers, i.e. the Pokemon, the creatures of this game, are uniquely designed. They all offer and do very exclusive things. They ain't limited and they don't really feel copy and paste in regards to what they offer, which is a great thing in my opinion. Uh, I think in a game on release, there's only just over 100 in said game. Now, if you compare that to Pokemon, I lost track at about 700, but a lot of Pokemon kind of look and feel a little copy and paste. I don't feel that with Power World, which is a great, great thing. So more is definitely not better in that regard. So like I said, there's only 100 plus, I think it's like 111 powers in this game for you to go around and collect, but they have promised that more will be added. There are various different types too. These types obviously can interact uh, with each other in regards to fighting and having advantages on the battlefield as you'd expect against other powers and different various types. With electric strong against water but then weak against rock kind, that kind of thing definitely goes on within this game. Now catching said powers isn't that straightforward though. Ones that are of a higher level require a lot more working out. The aim is to bring them down to a really low health and then chuck your sphere at them. This game's Pokeball. Now, depending on power level, your level, your catching ability, which you level up as you play, there is a percentage bar that obviously when closer to that 100%, your chances of catching said power increases. But it's never really a guarantee unless it states 100% within my experience. I've tried catching pals 5 levels higher than me, spent 15 minutes shooting them with arrows to get them to a one shot. I chucked my 
pokeball at them and it comes up with like a 35 percent chance of catching them and they spring straight out of you but yes you work out and learn different techniques and things you can unlock later in the game which will assist you in catching different types of these pals and there are multiple types of pals too we have ground, air, water as you'd expect, creatures more apparent at night and so forth. So in this regard the developers have really just progressed upon what Pokemon games should be offering by now and in my opinion have almost nailed it. Now there is so much more to these powers within this game uh, in regards to hatching babies, uh, getting eggs and incubating them, evolving them so to speak, them learning new abilities for you giving them upgrades uh, or them leveling themselves up and learning them. Each power will have other benefits like working for you in regards to base building, item crafting and things of that nature. Even things like certain powers generate and operate power for your base. Powers that watch your babies watch those eggs, powers to farm materials for you and so forth. Powers also unlock certain blueprints you purchase upon catching them. So it really isn't just about catching said pal for its fighting capabilities. They offer way more than this guys and like I said with over 100 in the game upon its release there's loads for you to do and collect. So as I said earlier the pals are only half of what this game offers. Well maybe a little over half but still there's so much more to do than besides just collecting these pals and making use of them. There's a massive base building side to this game where you literally have to build a home for yourself and your pals. If you guys have ever played Ark, well this is the perfect example of what would happen if that prime primitive Ark had a baby with Pokemon. That baby would 100% be called Power World. Also throw in a dash of Hogwarts Legacy's Vivarium in too. That is what we have here. Now as I loved Ark and have spent a lot of my life outside of YouTube playing this game, I knew I'd love this side of Power World, and I do. So a lot like Ark, as you level up you unlock points which you can purchase blueprints with which help you on your journey, as well as you obviously getting points you put into your character where you can level up uh, your health, your stamina, your carry weight etc etc. Now the blueprints we will take a quick look at. At. These include uh, farmable weapons you can build, items to build structures, armor, workbenches, repair stations, traps, beds, I mean everything you can imagine or mostly probably want. Did I also mention guys, this game does include weapons and I mean not weapons like bowls, I'm talking weapons like pistols, machine guns and even launchers that you can strap to your pals where you can use them in battle. Unbelievable. I mean it is still early days for me yet, I mean yes I've used a few weapons here and there. In regards to being able to strap a launcher to a pal, that's literally a max level unlock and I haven't got that far yet. Now what I was worried about looking at the trailer to this game and seeing these weapons in action against pals, being such a massive fan of Pokemon and this being so far away from Pokemon is unreal. Which initially when I was watching the trailers, it wasn't really sitting right with me. I mean Pokemon yes, Ark kinda, uh, but running around with guns, it just didn't sit right. But now I've actually experienced it for myself and I've played it for myself. What I will say is, uh, and I won't lie about this, with the nature of this game being like a hybrid, it does kind of feel like it's trying to do its own thing. Or I guess trying to smoke screen it. But in regards to going from a primitive bow, to a heavy machine gun to catch a pal, it actually doesn't feel as far out as I thought it would do, I mean it kind of suits the game this is. So in my opinion the inclusion of these heavy arsenal weapons do not actually take away from this game, but that's just my opinion. So yes guys, a lot like Ark, it's like that pyramid structure, you start from the bottom, you farm materials to craft better things which allow you to farm better materials to craft better items. This is definitely a massive part of what Power World also is, besides just running around the open world catching those pals. But a little more on the base building, as I know people are interested in this aspect of the game. The stuff you can create uh, is from as simple as beds for you and your pals to rest in, to factory lines for your pals to push out items at a faster rate, from simple arrows for your bow to mounted missile launchers, from mounted fire torches to full on industrial ceiling lights, to your pal box which is where you store the pals you have collected, apply them to work at your base to do work for you 
or a place for them to recover after being knocked out in battle. There's a lot you can build here and craft here which we'll check out in a second. So to start the game you create your character. With not the biggest customization options I have ever seen, you are then let loose into a massive open world with at the start only tutorials to progress for XP. In regards to story and lore, I won't say I found anything in regards to story. I mean so far it just seems like we've been basically let free to explore and just do our own thing. Now in regards to lore, which I know a lot of people would love in this kind of game, there are items you can find which add to your journal, there's a little story here I guess, but upon you seeing and capturing certain pals, or actually every pal in the game, you do gain information on them from your pal deck. Now your pal deck is basically like a poker deck. Now there are world bosses, there are events, there are trainers of a trainers that are a pain in the ass to try and take out. These are like the game's bosses. So yeah, there's plenty more to do besides just running around and catching pals. I mean, it's like a constant flow of endgame, if you get my gist. So checking out your inventory screen, this consists of what you collect, anything from food to feed yourself and your hardworking pals, to materials, upgrades, keys that unlock chests for that rare loot, to eggs which you can incubate and hatch babies, to medicine and so forth. They can apply four weapons uh, to your character, these can be farming tools, to bowls, to guns. Accessories, we do have a couple of slots for us too, we have headwear, body, shield and a glider which all can be applied at the same time. And of course quick slots for food at the bottom now on the right hand side of your screen we have character stats like level health and food and then we have stats which you do indeed level up upon you gaining levels on your character now if we tab across we have our party which are your pals which you can have on you and use in battle one at a time at the moment for me you also have details in each pal where you can name change, upgrade them and see what they are capable of doing in regards to work suitability and much more. Now the technology tab is where you unlock blueprints which you can access via leveling up and catching certain pals. There are 50 levels of items here too, so plenty for you to unlock and play around with on your adventures. Now the next tab is your pal deck, this is where you see information on pals you have seen or catch. Again, as of right now there's over 100 here, but they have promised more will be added. The next tab is that guild tab here, is basically where you create those guilds, those clans, and being able to have 32 people in your own server or in those public servers, you can invite friends, join a friends guild, or do what you want to do here. Now while we are here we may as well talk about multiplayer, it is a thing in the base game upon release, now the game is said to be a PvEVP, I think you will be able to battle your friends, but in regards to the open world public servers, I think the PvP side of the game they are still working on. So upon release it won't be just direct PvP, I think both players will have to accept battle in that regard. Now in regards to crossplay. But don't quote me on this, I do believe as of right now or upon release it will not be a feature of the game but I think it's something they are again working on. Now the next tab is your general options. Now an important note to make, you can play within your own world uh, with your own settings which you can more or less do anything from increase those XP gains, carry away infinite stamina, material farming, damage output, I mean you really can create your own world to play through here with these custom settings. This can be done to existing worlds too, I mean if you don't like your own settings you can back out to the main menu and change them at a later date. Date. This is a great option I have experimented with and it's great for people who want to play like offline, do your own thing. So yes guys, I am loving Power World so far, it's way better than I expected it to be. Not only did I expect it to be buggy, a bit laggy upon release, uh, it completely is the opposite for me, but I did expect it just to be like a complete ripoff of Pokemon. But there is so much more to this game game and again if you're a fan of Pokemon, if you're a fan of Ark, this is for you 100%. Again I thought it was just going to be a poor man Pokemon ripoff but it's completely the opposite. I'm addicted, I am loving it from being able to just freely explore, find secret loot, hidden dungeons with secret bosses, rare timed boss spawn ins which you can catch by the way if you see a boss in the open world and you take him down to a minimal health you do have a chance of capturing said boss and using it in the future. 
I'm also a massive fan of the building up my own base and working on it over time and just learning things as I go on. And that's exactly what I'm getting from this game so far. But there we have it guys, the basics to Power World and more or less everything you need to know. But if you do have a question, leave a comment down below or you can hit me up on my Discord again, linked down below guys. But guys, if you did enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.